Alright guys, how's it going? So I thought today we would try and be that little bit creative <laughs> and I thought we might as well try and replicate something like this in Blender. Now credit where credit is due. This was actually popularised by a man called Lee Griggs pff, six or seven years ago easily and he's a phenomenal artist. Uh, there's a good chance you've seen his work. He actually does a lot of promotional stuff for Arnold Render. So let's quickly jump into Blender and in traditional fashion, let's delete the cube. So the first thing I need to do is press Shift and A and we'll add in a plane. I'll then tab into edit mode, I'll make sure I'm selected on faces, I'll come up to the edge and I'll do a quick subdivide. I'll come down to the dialog box and I'll put the number of cuts up to something like 100. Now obviously the more subdivision that you've got, the higher the fidelity of the final images. And essentially what we're going to do is, we're going to put a matchstick on each of these points. But the first thing I need to do is create that matchstick. So I'm just going to select a random polygon and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press Shift and D and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'll press Enter to make sure I've dropped it. Now nothing might seem apparent at the moment, but if I right click on the polygon, come down to separate, separate by selection, if you take a look in the outliner, it's now made a separate object and if I hide the plane, you can see here, we now have a matchstick. So just to keep things in continuity, we'll call this matchstick. I should call it pillar, but hey. Now, sometimes you need to jump into object mode, drop the tool, select it and then jump back into edit mode. It seems to be a kind of strange thing. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the face of the matchstick and I'm going to do a quick extrusion. So I'll just hit extrude and we'll do a big extrusion actually. Now one thing I actually recommend you do is, you do a quick bevel, and the reason for this is, it gives the light something to actually refract or bounce off, and it means your render doesn't seem so flat. So with all the objects selected, I'll press A for example, I'll hit bevel, and I'll just do a quick bevel, so let me zoom in, and I'm not wanting anything extreme. So I've got something like 0.0006. And I'll make a couple of segments. Now I don't want to go overboard with this because obviously we're going to instance this. So I'll jump back into object mode, I'll enable the plane and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set the matchstick on the origin. So I'll come to object, set origin, geometry to origin and that just puts it bang in the centre. Now with the matchstick selected I'm going to press shift and I'm going to select the ground plane. And the reason for this is I actually want to parent it. So if I press Ctrl and P, it'll bring up set the parent options and I'm just going to parent to the object. Fine, nothing complicated. Now like I mentioned, what we're going to do is actually generate the matchstick in each point. So just to give you an example, I'm going to jump into wireframe. Let me just quickly jump to the top view. You can see that the matchstick is a perfect fit for each of these cubes. So when I put it in the centre of a point, it means everything will line up. Now what you can do is you can actually scale it in a little bit and that kind of leaves a kind of gap, but it's totally up to yourself. So let me quickly jump in a solid mode. And what I'm going to do here is I'll make sure I've got the plane selected. I'm going to come to the object context data. It's this kind of orange square. And I'm going to drop down the instances and of course we'll select verts. And what it's doing here is it's essentially instancing the matchstick on each of the vertices. So I can actually hide the original matchstick. You can see here it's kind of clipping a little bit. So the next step I need to do is do a displacement. So I want to kind of move these matchsticks up and down. So if I come to the modifier, add modifier, make sure you're selected on the plane and we'll hit displace. Before I actually add the displacement map, I actually recommend you work in the power of two. So this is 1024 by 1024. And this is basic height map. It's actually a height map of Scotland, believe it or not. So let me just quickly export this out and we'll jump back into Blender. So I'm going to assign a new texture to the displacement. And if you come to the two kind of dialogue boxes here, show texture and tab, select that, and then we can open up the image that I just saved out. And we get something like this, pretty damn cool to be honest, and obviously because we're working in the power of two, everything's kind of squared off. Now you can actually manipulate the displacement, so you can see how the strength is at 1, so you can actually work in the negative value and you get this kind of nice effect. And this really is artistic preference. So we get something like this, 
pretty cool. So the next question you're going to ask is, how do I texture this? <laughs> and it's fairly simple. Make sure you actually select the matchstick, so that's just the one matchstick. Jump into your shading tab, I've called mine the node editor for some reason, and we'll assign a new material to the matchstick. Now the first thing we need to do is grab the object info, so if we come up to add, search, let's look for object, object info, and we need to take the location and plug this into a vector of a mapping node, so we'll add in a mapping node. We'll take the location, put that into the vector, we'll make sure we're on texture, and we need an image, so let's say we want to project a certain texture on it, so we can go to image, we'll add in an image texture, just let me move these, give you a better view. You know if you press control and space that makes the window larger. So if we take the vector, we'll plug that into the image, and we'll just open up an image map, so let's... So here's one I've downloaded from the internet, thinking of getting a cat. <laughs> And I'll plug that into the base colour. So essentially what this is doing is it's taking the location, it's putting it into a mapping node, we have our image, and now we're jumping into the base colour. I press control and space, and you can see that it's actually working in the power of two. So I'm actually going to put the scale of the mapping node up, so I'll make that two. And the position and location is slightly off, I bet you it's minus five. Oh, it just... Let's try this. There we go, Ah, oh, we have this nice cat. And that's pretty much the basics of the tutorial. Let me jump into render view. And we essentially have the Lee Griggs effect. Now I'm not going to show you how to render this. That's completely up to yourself. I'd maybe suggest you give it a little bit of subsurface. And the great thing about this method is it actually works in Cycles and Eevee. Do me a favour guys. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter. I've got no mates. You know what to do. Peace.